Hi everybody. Hello. Um, hello. I'm not an academic Toastmaster, so you will pardon me if I have a few notes, and probably I get on around a bit. Okay. So I work I work with Artin for the last 25 years. Uh, it's an organization which undertakes our project in social and community context. We work with many different community groups. Um, there will be groups like um, people with disability. Um, sorry, I need to look at my notes to start. Um, homeless refugees, um, the traveling community, etc. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to cool down a bit. <laughs> I'm not a public speaker. So for the last 25 years, we do lots, we've done lots of projects in Perth. They are all community-based. Um, we don't do particular form of art like disability, you, disability art or youth art, etc. We don't believe in compartmentalization. Our work is community art, meaning we try to put as many ways of life together to share experience, to share knowledge, and um, to create together work. Um, what we believe in, so our work is process-based on people are at the center of our creative process. We are doing community art, as it says on the can. The, the focus is on collaboration, on community development through the art. Majority of our work happens in the public space. For the last 25 years, we've run a lot of different projects, which majority of them, like I said, were based in the public space. The first project that we run, uh, that I'm going to talk sorry tonight, I'm going to try to a few examples to talk about the work we do with communities. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is Voices from Shandong. That's a project we started in, 19, uh, in, sorry, in 2011, and it took us three years to complete. Um, the idea was to make 1,200 flags with 1,200 members of the community and to raise them on the Tower of Shandong. It took us three years, 45 community groups, around 200 workshops. Now, the idea of a project like that is that people can put their mark on the city in the most beautiful exhibition space that there is, the sky of Cork. Now, this is about citizenship. This is about participation. Can you pass on the other one? That's the result. Um, that's part of a program called What If that we started to develop in 2005. It was a program of creative research into urban space on community-based projects. So all those projects are happening in the public space. It's about the people getting ownership of the public space, putting their mark on it, reclaiming it for, for themselves. So on this one, like I said, 1,200 1, people. On the day of the raising of the flag, we had 100 people, 100 young people who participated in the project, who also um, co-created a choir composition. So they were singing at the same time that the flags were rising up. Now that project could be seen from every corner of Cork. Um, I think what was really important is I'm going to talk a bit more of that after. It was happening on the north side. Um, the north side has been deprived of access to resource, to events, to a lot of the cultural network that generally is, center, is in the city center for many years. And this was the occasion for many people, again, to, to say, we are here, and we can do art. We can do art together and we can represent our community. That's the next project. So that's another What If project. Um, that's from 2009. Um, so that project started with an idea that um, I knew somebody in France who was working in community context and who have advantage 
in the early 90s, the technique called reverse graffiti. And he was working with that with a lot of community in, in France. Um, we had that idea of doing a project in Shandon. Shandon was quite neglected at the time um, by the local authority. The people were feeling a bit abon abandoned um, in terms of the development of their community. Um, we had been there for five years developing different projects with the different groups there, old folks as well as young people. Um, we were wanting to create something that would really uplift the people there in the area. So we presented the idea of doing re reverse graffiti to the, representat the representative of the community. At first, of course, when we mentioned graffiti, they were not very pleased. Uh, they were not very impressed. Particularly when we said that we are wanting to put it on the landmarks building, mm -hmm. the craft center, the shopping train. Um, at the time, the, again, like that area was quite neglected. People felt that there was a huge possibilities for tourism, for regenerating the cultural heritage of the place. I think people felt that they were not considered enough, and that was post 2005. Funding was supposed to come in the area for a long time, it hasn't happened. So, how do you give back the power to the community? How do you, do you give back the idea that this is their community, they can put their mark on it and say very loud and clear that they are creative and they're going to re regain their ground? By entering in conversation with them really deeply on a lot of the time, our approach is to learn, to know where we work. So first, we meet the people on the street, generally, we do research. Um, and then we talk with local historians, etc. We accumulate a lot of knowledge about, around the place. We also meet the young people. We also try to meet all the people who live in that area. But there, we choose with that project to start with the older um, members of the community. So we started with a series of clinic consultation where we asked people um, memories about the place, how it was when you were 12 years old in Shandon in the 40s, in the 50s. Um, we collected many, many images also at the same time, photographs, etc. And then those photographs, we created with them around 50 large stencils that we power wash on the walls. With that, we work with a lot of young people also. It was important for us because that was a way of connecting the old with the young. It was also, in Shandon, there were a lot of new people who had arrived from Africa, from Eastern Europe, and those people were trying to settle in. There was not a lot of mix, like they were all staying on their side of the street. A lot of them had no idea of the community where they had arrived, of the history behind it. This was a way, a platform of trying to put people together to look at the history of the local community, but to connect it to the present. We passed around a month to work in the street after having done all the sensors with the young people, and then we washed. Now the idea of reverse graffiti is just to take out the dirt, um, like with a power washing, and um, then after a while those images will fade of course because the pollution is going to come back. So, so <laughs> we, did, we did that for a month in the streets. Um, when it was completed there was a sense of enthusiasm from the community. Um, like for a lot of them to see the pictures of their home mothers of memories that they had got before was that their history as people was as important as the history of the building itself. So that's, for example, the, um, the front of the Butter Exchange building or Craft Center. So on it, there's images of barrel makers, of butter makers, um, but also of young people. There's also imagery at, at the point this was where um, the Sunbeam factory was. They were there for a few years making lingerie and things like that there. So all those things 
and it appears in all over the areas, remind people of where they come from and give them pride. This one is an important one because that's the oldest picture that we got. It was from 1895. Um, it was the Shandon Brass Band, which started in 1878. So to do a stencil of the wall bound, the guys were so impressed, they were so touched. Um, again, um, it's, there was a sense of pride for all of them. I think some of them cried when they, when they saw it. Interestingly also, those images fed, they were like ghosts, so they come to remind the past, but then they disappear. Um, they were temporary as our city is. So all of that is part of what if. Um, we started that in 2005. The idea of what if was exploring the public space into a lot of different medium, um, community-based project all the time. Um, all the process of what if has always been to meet the people and to ask them questions about the locality where they live, about their place, and try to get as many information as we could to build projects. When we did all those research in Shandon, like there's a what if Shandon, I think it's the number two that we did, um, there was something very evident, like we, we were in the street every day for something nearly a week asking people, surveying, you know, feeling, interviewing people, etc. And one thing that I mentioned at the start is that people on the north side were really feeling that they were left out. Um, like in a lot of European city, culture, um, majority of the cultural network is anchored into the city center and, and is accessible only for a few. And then it's also majority of the things that are there, the price are quite high. It's not accessible for a lot of people. Um, a lot of it doesn't talk to them. They were craving for an event up there. They were craving for something happening on their side that would concern them. We had 10 years of street celebration experience behind us. We did lots of street theater, things like that. We decided to create an event, a small one at the start, like we had very little resource. Like we, start, we started the, that project with around, what, 30, 40 people? The youth of the area, few volunteers. Um, the idea was so to use Sawen as a platform. Now Sawen is Halloween in English. At the time, that was 2006, um, the only thing that you have for Sawen was plenty of people drunk in the city center. A lot of the young people couldn't really go out to knock at every door to ask for sweets or whatever because the place wasn't very safe. There was lots of social anti-behavior. Um, and the old folks were not there. And Sawen was a community event, a community tradition for many, many years. So that was something we could tap in without imposing an, an artistic agenda. We were coming with something that belonged to the people, and we built from that. And that's what a lot of our work is about. It's encouraging people to be creative, to work together. Um, this one is just, it took 10 years to today. Um, today we have 15,000 people in the street who come to see it. Um, it's all the north side who come down. We have four, 500 participants, plenty of different community groups who want to take part. Um, it's, that's Shandong, isn't it beautiful? To see all those people in the street celebrating together. That's what commun community art is about. It's about building up community. It's social development. Um, I think I'm gonna stop there, oh. okay? <laughs> Thank you.